Welcome back, true believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans, to another extremely exciting episode of Marvel Spider-Man 2 101. And boy, do we have a lot of awesome information to dive into today. Where even though we've already received a plethora of information from the actor portraying Peter Parker in Marvel Spider-Man 2 of Yuri Lowenthal, as well as Insomniac themselves in their recent PlayStation blog, the hype train for this game is clearly showing no signs of stopping. Some of you said, oh, they showed too much. I assure you, you have seen nothing yet. It is, you, we've just scratched the surface. It, it, is, it is just the thwip of the spider bird. If I, may, if I may coin that. You may. Because recently on social media, Insomniac shared a multitude of interviews that they were able to conduct with a variety of gaming industry outlets, like Eurogamer, Famitsu, and IGN. And in each of these interviews, we did receive even more amazing news regarding Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Primarily in relation to the game's open world size, when exactly we'll be able to switch between Peter and Miles, and of course, full-on emphasis on Black Suit Spider-Man and I'm gonna be breaking down everything that you need to know from all these recent articles. So definitely be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're just as hyped for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 as I am. And to kick things off with a bang, let's begin with the news bomb coming from Famitsu, where it has now been officially confirmed by Insomniac Games themselves that Marvel's Spider-Man 2 confirms Brooklyn in addition to Queens, and the world size will be roughly twice the size as the open world featured in the previous Spider-Man games. Whereas the interviewer was talking to the creative director of Marvel Spider-Man 2 himself of the one and only Brian Intihar, they went on to ask him the gameplay video showed new locations, but how much more area has been added in this title? And as Brian says, we've added Queens and Brooklyn to the map which makes it roughly twice the size of our previous work. These two neighborhoods are a bit smaller and more residential, so they have a different charm than Manhattan. We have prepared some unexpected situations that we have never seen before, such as battles using the river that runs between the neighborhoods, so please look forward to them. And while it was pretty much obvious to expect at this point, given that this is the full-on next-gen sequel of the Marvel Spider-Man franchise, and taking the prequel comic into consideration, it does make sense that we would be be able to fully explore Queens and Brooklyn in Marvel Spider-Man 2 as both Peter and Miles respectively, considering that Peter Parker himself is currently living in Aunt May's house located in Queens, and as for Miles, he is fully attending Brooklyn Visions Academy. So including both of these new areas to explore, both in the sense of a gameplay perspective and a narrative perspective, is the only logical step that Insomniac could have taken to make the map feel different from the previous games. But what's crazy to see is that with the addition of these new burrows, and potentially other areas to explore, is that the overall map size of Marvel Spider-Man 2 is twice the size of what Insomniac previously showed us in Spider-Man PS4 and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. And considering how gorgeous Insomniac already made the main island of Manhattan look in the previous games, I can't wait to see the overall designs that Insomniac will feature for Queens and Brooklyn, as well as incorporating that natural Marvel aesthetic. But moving on to the real meat and potatoes of all this news is the brand new interviews that we did receive from Insomniac coming from Eurogamer, where they did end up posting two separate interviews discussing about the character switching mechanics in Marvel Spider-Man 2, as well as the darker narrative that Insomniac will be telling within this game, completely encompassing Black Suit Spider-Man in all his glory. Whereas it was reported by Victoria Kennedy from Eurogamer, last week, Insomniac Games showed off Spider-Man 2's seamless transitions between Peter Parker and fellow web-slinger Miles Morales. These moments in the sequel's gameplay reveal were impressive invoking memories of similar fluidity from Insomniac's fellow PS5 exclusive, Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart. But I still had questions. Can we only switch characters at certain story points, or will we be able to switch between them freely? It turns out, the answer is a little bit of both. And again, as this was answered fully by Brian Hell No Intahar himself, he stated that when you're playing the main story, we control when you switch between Pete and Miles. It's done in service to the story when we're making those switches for sure. So, as you saw in that gameplay reveal, which is a segment of the main story, we 
are predetermining those based on what we want to do for how the story plays out. But, when you are in Spider-Man 2's New York open world, however, it's different. We have content designed around Peter. We have content designed around Miles. And we have content where you can play either. You'll be able to, in the open world, freely switch between them with a simple button press. This is thanks to the power of the PlayStation 5. Being able to switch in the open world so quickly between the two characters is really, really awesome. Just being able to pick and choose who I want to play as for a certain activity, it's been so awesome to have that feature. It's something we probably wouldn't have explored previously. And additionally, this character switching will all tie in with Spider-Man 2's three skill trees. One for Peter, one for Miles, and one that is shared. And to put things short and sweet, everybody, is that this is actually absolutely phenomenal. Not only is it great to receive official confirmation that both Peter and Miles will have their own separate skill trees that we can upgrade individually, as well as a shared skill tree that will include upgrades tailored for both Spider-Man simultaneously, but Insomniac is truly going full on GTA 5 at this point, where we will be able to seamlessly switch between Peter and Miles on the fly whenever we feel like in the open world at a mere press of a button. And I have to be honest, while I am definitely looking forward to playing as Miles Morales within this game given all of his new powers, I can already guarantee you that I'm going to choose to play as Symbiote Spider-Man the majority of the time while swinging through Marvel's New York. But knowing that you can simply swap between them whenever you want is flat out fantastic. And speaking of switching between Peter and Miles, we do have even more information about this coming from Marvel Spider-Man 2's game director of Ryan Smith, where he says that we want to make sure that when you do switch between the heroes, there's a sense of familiarity. They're both Spider-Man. Spider-Man. You know how to play the game, but you still have that flexibility and that customization for upgrading each of them with their skill trees. We saw in the gameplay reveal where Miles has the evolved Venom powers, whereas Peter has the symbiote abilities. And so those change a bit of how you play, and you can upgrade those in their respective trees as well. And coming from me personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing what type of upgrades Insomniac will include for both Spider-Man. Given that some of the upgrades from the previous Insomniac Spider-Man games did didn't carry a whole lot of depth to when you try to make Spider-Man feel stronger. But this time around, Peter and Miles are clearly a lot more skilled in comparison to the previous games. So it's going to be very intriguing to see exactly what these upgrades will do to make sure that Peter and Miles feel even more powerful. And the last point that I am going to cover in this article is a question that I know a lot of people have been dreading ever since Spider-Man PS4 released in 2018. And that is whether or not we will see the return of the Mary Jane missions in Marvel Spider-Man 2. No, please, please don't say that. Because as it stands right now, the closest answer that we have is that it's still currently unknown. Whereas Victoria wrote is that I asked if there will be the chance to perhaps switch to other characters, such as Reporter and Peter's girlfriend, MJ. But I was quickly told I needed to keep the focus on last week's gameplay. Ah well, I tried. So, yeah. From the majority of fans who played Spider-Man PS4 back in 2018, the general consensus from people playing that game is that the MJ missions were their least favorite part about it. Given that they thought that it broke up the pacing of the game's story, as well as taking away the main focus from the character that everybody wanted to play as, is, obviously, Spider-Man. But the reason why Insomniac chose to do that, as well as playing as Miles Morales without powers, is that they wanted to showcase the story from a human perspective in contrast to Peter Parker's superhuman perspective. And, in my opinion, I actually think that it worked really well in certain parts of the game's story. But this time around, the main focus of Marvel Spider-Man 2's story is Peter's main relationship with the symbiote, and Miles Morales dealing with the ramifications of that. So even though Insomniac could still try and incorporate MJ missions in Marvel Spider-Man 2, I think the game would feel a bit too bloated if they try to fit all that in at the same time. But regardless, this is shaping up to be a very big game. So there's always the chance that Insomniac could go and do the unthinkable. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. Stings, doesn't it? Be a chump. Fly. But we'll just have to wait and see exactly how the story shapes up for Marvel's Spider-Man 2. And speaking of the game's story, this is where we get to another article written by Victoria from Eurogamer, where once again, coming from the fragile eagle himself of Brian Intihar, he said that whether it's Kraven, which we confirmed in the beginning of the sequence, and obviously, we showed Venom when we first announced the game, and now with the symbiote and Pete being bonded with the symbiote, there's naturally going to be some darker elements to the story. That's just being respectful to those 
those characters and what they bring to the overall experience. What we've talked a lot about is, whether it was Marvel's Spider-Man or Miles Morales, our games are all about still having heart and humor. It's really finding that balance between those darker themes and characters, but also delivering that very human story where there's a lot of heart and humor. I think that's what was tricky, but I do think we found that nice balance at the end of the day. Intihar reiterates there will be plenty of moments to make us laugh, smile, and quote-unquote tug on the heartstrings. Achieving a delicate balance of light and dark in the game's script is the task of the narrative team, which includes John Paquette and Benjamin Arfman, both writers on Marvel's Spider-Man, and Ratchet writer Lauren Mee. They do a great job, but it's very, very difficult. But that's what we owe to the players. We owe that to them, to find that balance between these darker themes with the symbiote and Kraven and Venom, and maybe others. But also, you know, to make people laugh. And as a little bit of a bonus regarding the game's story, is that there was a very interesting question asked by PressStart.com, who also got to interview Brian directly, where they pretty much go on to ask Kim, are you able to talk about how long after Marvel's Spider-Man 2 takes place from Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, considering that was the last game that took place in Insomniac's universe. And as Brian states, it's about 10 months after the events of Miles Morales. So Miles has kind of gone through his journey to understand what kind of Spider-Man he wants to be, and him and Peter are a great team. And that's kind of where we kick things off at the beginning of this game. I genuinely believe when I say this is that this has the potential of being one of the best Spider-Man stories we've ever seen. And knowing that the black suit is going to play a massive factor in that, I for one am beyond ecstatic. And speaking of the black suit, this is where we start to hear more details about the symbiote coming from Brian Intar himself, who also goes on to reiterate the statements that were previously made by Yuri Lowenthal, where continuing on with the article is that despite promises of levity, there is no denying the symbiote suit's effects on Peter Parker, something actor Yuri Lowenthal has likened to an addiction, whereas Brian reaffirms, Yuri is right. The theme of addiction is prevalent, especially because of the symbiote. We did a lot of research, not only on previous stories with the symbiote, but also just looking at when Peter is bonded. What can that feel like? Not to go into too many things about how it plays in the narrative, but we want to treat it very seriously. When Peter gets bonded with the symbiote, it's not a joke. It's not something we want to make fun of. Yuri will forever be my Peter Parker. When I hear Spider-Man, I hear his voice. That's how well he does as Peter, so I think it can be pretty jarring to hear him talk like that, like he does in the gameplay reveal. So, it's really about playing into those themes of addiction, how that can impact someone's personality, impact the people around them, and you're going to see that it's not just how it's impacting Peter on his own, but also those close to him. You're going to see that play out throughout the game. And to add even further depth to these symbiote details is actually with an article from IGN, where even though it covers a lot of information that was already stated in the PlayStation blog, we do get even more interesting statements from Brian Intar talking about the black suit, but you may be able to see some clues in the suit design, which isn't just a sleek black suit this time around. If you look closely, you can see Peter has some tendrils wrapped around his arms. And like I directly brought up in one of my previous videos, is that the goal was to reinforce to audiences that the suit is not cloth but organic, and its origins will tie into why it looks a certain way. I will tell you there's more to that suit than we've shown in terms of visuals than we've shown in that gameplay reveal. It's that blend of really wanting to have that familiarity, you know, of being black and the white spider symbol, but at the same time add elements to it. Some expected, some unexpected, and some yet to be revealed. And I don't know about any of you, but those statements flat out tease to me that we might end up seeing a type of spectacular Spider-Man black suit mechanic, where the overall symbiote suit design will start to evolve and change even further as the story keeps progressing, truly showcasing the deterioration of Peter's mental state, and also showcasing how far he's fallen with the symbiote's influence. And for me, that is easily going to be one of the biggest highlights of the entire game, if that ends up happening. And if you didn't know this about me already, everybody, is that the black suit narrative for Spider-Man is hands down one of my favorite stories involving the character, and seeing how 
how much love and care Insomniac is pouring within the entirety of that story is pretty much making me shed tears of joy as a diehard Black Suit Spider-Man fan. And like Yuri Lowenthal and Brian Intar have already said themselves, is that the gameplay demo is merely a taste of what we can expect in the final product. And if executed well, which I'm sure they will, this has the chance of being the best Black Suit storyline we've ever seen in any form of Spider-Man media. And I simply cannot wait. Now back to the article is where we see Brian discussing the scope of Marvel Spider-Man 2, considering that this is a full-on sequel to the base Marvel Spider-Man game from 2018, instead of a smaller scale standalone game like what we saw with Miles Morales. Whereas Brian goes on to analyze is that it's a number two on the box because of the two Spider-Man. It's not just because it's a sequel. We wanted to make sure we showed off that this game does feature two Spider-Man, each with their own story, but with a bigger story as well. But there's obviously more to show before we ship. We're always looking to improve the game. Everything will continue to get better and better. Whether it's performance, whether it's fidelity, whether it's our gameplay. Our goal is to obviously make a very polished, stable experience when we ship the game. That also, at the end of the day, takes advantage of what the PlayStation 5 hardware can do. I think you saw a lot of that in the gameplay reveal. From the hero switching to the sense of speed and traversal, we're gonna continue to work on until our project director, Jeanette, says, Brian, Ryan, stop working on the game. When we're delivering a sequel, we're looking to improve all elements, whether it's traversal, combat, or mission design. I think the gameplay reveal is a good example of how we want to elevate it. It's a big blockbuster moment. We have Peter starting out in Queens, quickly switching to Miles in the city, then wingsuiting and slingshotting over to Harlem, and switching back and forth along the East River. I think it's about just upping everything we possibly can and taking advantage of the hardware. Things like moving at speeds that we weren't moving at before and having all these different tricks. And I for one couldn't agree more. Like we saw in the gameplay demo is that the web swinging wasn't trying to be the main focus of everything that Insomniac wanted to showcase within the footage that was new to the entire Marvel Spider-Man franchise. And like Brian says, seamlessly switching between Peter and Miles, the slingshotting, and the wingsuiting are just a few of the new aspects that we can't expect in this game. And clearly, Insomniac is doing their absolute best to give us the definitive Spider-Man gaming experience that we've all been dreaming for. And knowing that they've already delivered on that twice now with Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales, I have no doubt that they're going to be able to do it again with Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Because like I always say, in Insomniac we trust. And to wrap up the entirety of this humongous news bomb, everybody, is another article from the website of CGM Magazine. The weight of the franchise's reputation is not lost on Intihar and Smith. With great power of working on a franchise like like this, the responsibility we have. It's a little cliche to say that, but it's true. This team is really passionate about doing the franchise justice, because we know how important it is. Citing the filmmakers behind the Spider-Verse films, Intihar added, we just hope to continue the high quality bar that's been done. Whether it's in comics, whether it's been done in the first set of films all the way up through the MCU, and now through Spider-Verse. And in a shocking turn of events everybody, if all this new information wasn't enough to get you hyped for Marvel Spider-Man 2, then prepare to get your mind blown because we might have also just received a leaked release date for the game. Where once again coming from Eurogamer, they actually posted this information online before quickly deleting the post shortly afterwards. Whereas this was screen grabbed by one of my amazing fellow Twitter mutuals of Dion, it said online that a custom Spidey PS5 is coming too. Just seven days after Marvel Spider-Man 2's official gameplay reveal during Sony's PlayStation Showcase, developer Insomniac has announced the eagerly awaited open world sequel will launch for PS5 on the 8th of September. Now again everybody, keep in mind that there has not been an official word yet from anyone at Marvel, Insomniac, or Sony talking about the exact release date of Marvel Spider-Man 2, but this certainly does coincide with what we previously heard from Venom's main actor of Tony Todd, saying that the game will in fact release in September of 2023, with a heavy marketing push for the game to begin in August. Plus, September 8th lands on a Friday, which is usually when most big AAA games end up releasing. That may either end up being Tuesdays or Fridays. But taking this particular Friday into consideration, this certainly would make a lot of sense. Not to mention that if they also end up releasing a custom Spider-Man themed PlayStation 5, then I am going to go absolutely broke
broke by the time this game launches. And I for one couldn't thank Insomniac more. Not only did we receive a massive amount of new information about Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from a plethora of articles surrounding the game, but Insomniac Games is without a doubt one of the best things to ever happen to the Spider-Man IP. They have clearly learned their lessons from Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales, and now setting out to make Marvel's Spider-Man 2 the definitive next-gen Spider-Man gaming experience, while also doing complete justice to both Peter and Miles' characters, thoroughly expanding the game's open world with Queens and Brooklyn, and delving into a black suit storyline that will push Peter Parker to his limits, is nothing short of a dream come true for any die-hard Spidey fan. And seeing all these details just stampede out for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 ever since the PlayStation Showcase happened last week, we're sure to get even more information and potentially see even more footage of the game in action relatively soon. But with all that said everybody, that is the major video I have for you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What are your thoughts on all this insane information for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, and which aspect of the game are you looking forward to the most? Let me know what you think, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you'd enjoy, and for more Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos like this in the future. We're less than 300 subscribers away from reaching 100,000 subscribers on the channel everybody, and I can't thank you enough for all your incredible support, and you'll definitely want to make sure you stay tuned for any and all upcoming Marvel Spider-Man 2 updates. But until next time, true believers, thank you all so much for watching, stay spectacular, Spidey fans, and peace out.